Okay, now to the last one. It's number seven and eight. So the last one was an economy that had a recession. Then remember, we only have two problems in AP macro. We have re recession and we have inflation. So now we're going to be drawing an economy with an inflationary gap. So if we have an inflationary gap, it means we're producing too much, okay, overusing resources, stuff like that. So now I'm going to have short run supply and aggregate demand crossing to the right. So our GDP or real output is actually going to be beyond full employment output. Now, I've got my current price level, I've got my current output level or GDP, I've got all my labels on here. So now I know that I'm going to have to decrease aggregate demand by either raising taxes, slowing government spending, raising the interest rate through monetary policy to slow down investment. Let me zoom in a little bit. There you go. And now we're going to have to decrease aggregate demand. So remember, we always increase right or decrease left. So this time we're going to decrease to the left. And I'm first, I'm going to pick this target right here, right where these cross, so I can get all three to cross again. That's where we want to go. So aggregate demand through policy, we're going to decrease it. That is going to accomplish our goal of pulling prices down or slowing the economy. Remember, that's why we use red, make it slow, reduce inflation. So that's going to pull back GDP. And unfortunately, when we slow down GDP, we're going to cause some unemployment. Well, that's going to be our trade-off, isn't it? Lower price levels, which is also inflation. Sorry, a little mistake. Or Bob Ross, happy accident. Okay, so we got inflation. Now we're going to drop inflation, which is our goal, because we have that inflationary gap. This is the gap that we want to close. Sometimes you'll see questions that have like, there's a $500 billion gap. What government spending, and use the multiplier. And anyways, there's lots of ways to solve, this, solve these. Now, let's look at our aggregate demand mirror on this side. And forgot my natural rate of unemployment. So now I'm thinking, right here at this point is equilibrium. So at equilibrium, I'd have this much inflation. However, we have more than what we would have at equilibrium. So we're actually going to start right here. Now our goal is to make this reflection. Remember, anytime we have a shift in aggregate demand, it's going to be a movement. We're going to mirror that on the Phillips curve. So if we're at this level right here, we're going to make our movement down to this level. So we did have this much inflation. And now we have, and we had this much unemployment. Unfortunately, unemployment is going to increase because GDP decreased. We tried to do that through policy, but no one will ever get elected saying they're going to raise unemployment. So this doesn't really happen very much, other than some monetary policy stuff. All right, so unemployment mirrored that right there. Now, did our goal work? Yes. We reduced inflation. So we show that by our movement along the short run Phillips curve. We start here with inflation and then we fix it. Okay. There's number seven and eight on aggregate demand and on the Phillips curve. All right.